With release of Season of the Dawn, your class ability is now tied to your neutral stats, or mobility, resilience, and recovery, depending on if you're a hunter, warlock, or titan. For hunters, the higher your mobility, the faster your dodge cooldown is, if you're a titan, the higher your resilience, the faster your barricade cooldown is, and if you're a warlock, the higher your recovery, the faster your rift cooldown is. What you're seeing in the background right now is me going through different levels of recovery and seeing how long the rift takes to charge, starting from when I click the class ability button to when I get it back. Now before this particular update, you used to have to use what's called a paragon mod in your armor to reduce your cooldown. As of now, Paragon mods do not exist on Armor 2.0, but if you have old armor from the 1.0 system and spare Paragon mods, you can actually slot those on Armor 1.0 and use them now. I know, I know, it sounds crazy. One would think that the Paragon mods would not stack with 10 recovery, but they do. The exact cooldown numbers are as follows. If you run zero recovery, your rift comes back in two minutes. If you run 10 recovery, your rift comes back in 42 and a half seconds. With 10 recovery and one paragon, 37 seconds. With two paragons and 10 recovery, 33 seconds. And with three, I feel like you give up too much with three, but if you're curious, it takes 30 seconds exactly with tier 10 recovery and three paragon mods. Before anyone grabs torches and pitchforks, hear me out for a second. I feel that using armor 1.0 on a warlock gives up way too much utility because the armor 2.0 system is superior in a lot of ways. Of course, if you wanted to get the fastest rift possible, you would just use 5 paragon mods plus 10 recovery, and that would be really, really fast. You could even try to use a mix of armor 1 and 2.0 and try something like the bottom tree stormcaller for the electrostatic surge perk, which states that if you're around teammates, your rift gets cooled down faster. But unfortunately, Electrostatic Surge does not stack with 10 recovery or with Paragon mods that equal 10 recovery or more. Long story short, regardless of if you play Warlock, Hunter, or Titan, recovery is a very important stat that a lot of top PvP players would just go for anyway. Now that it's tied to the rift cooldown, going from 2 minutes to 42 and a half seconds, it's almost a non-decision for any competent Warlock player. The obvious very terrifying aspect of this is that Warlocks get a severe buff, and believe it or not, I think Titans and Hunters get a nerf, and I'll explain. Effectively, Warlocks get a faster cooldown at zero cost, and both Hunters and Titans have to give up resilience or mobility to spec into recovery and still have fast cooldowns. So, today's build that you're going to see capitalizes on this idea. If Hunters and Titans want to give up the Resilience stat to instead get higher mobility or higher recovery, then they're gonna get punished. Introducing the Sanguine Alchemy Exotic Chess Piece. If you throw a Rift while wearing this chess piece, you get Wall Hacks, and it's a 30 meter radius. So if anybody steps within this 30 meter radius, they get tracked through the wall, and if they leave the 30 meter radius after already getting tracked, they stay tracked. So what was previously a problem every 2 minutes or so is now a problem every 40 seconds because you're going to throw a wall hacks riff every 40 seconds or maybe even faster. Basically, this is Warlock's answer to the Titan's One-Eyed Mask, which functions as follows. The One-Eyed Mask works for the low cost of just getting shot at, tracks a single target, you don't have to be stationary for this to happen, you can move around freely, you can see them through the wall, if you succeed in killing your wall hack target, which is pretty easy because you can see them through the wall, you start getting health recovery and a damage boost, which can tip some weapons to require one less shot, or it can tip some high impact weapons to maybe body shot. Meanwhile, for Warlocks, the Sanguine functions by you throw your Rift, it tracks any target within a 30 meter radius, you have to be stationary, you have to give up your Rift, and for these reasons, because the OEM is passive, I think they're competitively equal to each other. So since I spent the last season getting complained at to just get good and learn to outplay people using these degenerate builds because they don't really offer many counter options, I'm going to abuse the shit out of all of this. I've had a complete perspective shift when it comes to Destiny 2. I no longer look at this as a game with any sort of skillful avenue to outplay your opponent. Instead, I think of this game like a party game, something like Mario Kart, but everybody has access to blue shells, and the way to beat somebody is to simply create a dirtier build. And the way to get the dirtier build is to play the PvE side, the MMO side of Destiny 2, more efficiently. 
On the same token, I can beat opponents that are far more skilled than myself by simply just creating a better build. So let the better creator win, not necessarily the more skillful player. When I look at Destiny in this perspective, it is so much more fun. It is hilarious to play. Is it less mentally engaging? Absolutely. But if anybody has a problem with this perspective shift and how I'm approaching the game, feel free to write a postcard to Bungie and complain about primary weapons not having a presence, or maybe the aim assist stat being too high on weapons, making it so people can miss by a wide margin and still get headshots. Maybe the wild abilities. Maybe the lack of objective presence. I don't know, but if you guys want to go back to that kind of game, be my guest. I will take that with a smile on my face. I had so much fun in year one. But if you have a problem with the way it is right now and the perspective I have, well, just think about it. You asked for power fantasy, and now we have it. My warlock is a powerful healer that heals teammates and empowers them with motivational speaking and empowering riffs. Think about it for a second. Just think. You asked for power fantasy, so how from a developer point of view is Bungie supposed to make you, the viewer, specifically powerful, but not anybody else? No, that doesn't make sense. It's either everyone's powerful or everybody's on a fair playing field. So how are they going to do it? Answer is they're not. This is what we have. This is how I'm playing. If you have a complaint, you can unsubscribe or I'll see you in Trials of Osiris where you have to deal with this bullshit. And yeah, maybe I'm jumping the gun assuming Trials of Osiris is coming back. I don't have any sort of extra information on this sort of thing, but I think it's inevitable. I think it is coming back. And if some of y'all don't start embracing a new way to look at the game, you're setting yourself up for a lot of frustration and failure. So maybe just consider it. <sighs> Rant aside, now I can talk about the build. So, way back at the beginning of this video before I got sidetracked, I was talking about how Hunters and Titans have to give up something in order to have 10 recovery. And that, a lot of the time, they're going to forego resilience. Specifically, they're going to forego at least 4 resilience. And what does that mean? That means if I'm sitting in an empowering rift, I can shoot them in the foot and it counts as a kill. To make matters worse, I have my rift up every 40 seconds. To make matters worse than that, I have wall hacks on my rift. And to make matters the worst of all, if I heal my teammates, I get my rift back almost instantly. Let this sink in for a second. I'm using a sniper rifle that I can miss my opponent with and still get bullets back in the magazine. I can take an infinite amount of pot shots a couple seconds in between. I'm sitting on a rift that lets me know where my opponents are through the wall within 30 meters and the way almost every map is created in this game, they're going to be within 30 meters if they want to challenge a sightline. So I can just pre-aim with my sniper rifle and as long as they are less than 4 resilience, I can shoot them in the toe and pick up the kill. But let's say they are more than 3 resilience. Well then I just add one more step and that is shoot them in the body, they have literally no health bar, one health left. and. I just shoot my fighting lion and pick up the kill because I've used this gun since day one. I surely know how to bounce it off a nearby wall and find somebody for one single point of damage. That's right, I wasn't joking with the title, I wasn't joking with the thumbnail. This is not clickbait, this is a real build in Destiny 2. Fact of the matter is, this build has unintentionally been buffed and a lot of things around it have been unintentionally nerfed. I don't think Bungie was really expecting the neutral stats like mobility, resilience, and recovery to make that big of a difference by tying them to Paragon. I think the better solution would have been to change the intellect stat to Paragon and it would have been very simple. But instead, what was usually a problem every two minutes is now a problem almost indefinitely. And the thing about the healer is, previously the Well of Radiance was not a good super. That was before every super was able to be headshot. But now that you can headshot every super with a adaptive or better sniper rifle, the Well of Radiance kicks ass because now that super is on a level playing field. It can get headshot just like someone else can get headshot. So the uh, typical strategy here is to sit on an empowering wall hack rift, body shot somebody, clean up with a lion, and play very passively. Since you're playing passively, you're going to put all your skill points into intellect so you get a super faster by playing passively. Then you're going to throw the Well of Radiance down in the middle of the map on the power ammo, get power ammo to counter other supers, feed orbs of light to your teammates who has maybe a better roaming super, or you could double down on passive supers as well, and just keep farming super to counter your opponents. It's very, very degenerate. And for the record, I'm not calling people who use this stuff degenerates. I'm saying the strategy is so strong that it offers almost no counterplay, or the counterplay options aren't very skillful or engaging. 
there are a lot of builds in Destiny 2 that are just as powerful, if not more powerful, and maybe even take more skill to pilot or operate. The thing is, this build isn't even finished yet, it just finally has the necessary components. I can improve it by getting higher stat roll and better distributed stat armor, as well as better weapons in my inventory to deal with a variety of situations. Like for instance, I don't just use the Provoker and Fighting Lion, I also have the Last Word and the Tatara Gaze, which is a high impact sniper that can have kill clips. So, I can find my kill in the rift, shoot him in the toe, then reload my sniper rifle to get kill clip and go hunting. So while this build isn't exactly finished, I wanted to put this on your guys' radar so you can start working towards something similar or creating something even more dastardly. And if you can think of that, of course, let me know in the comment section below. What I'll be doing in the meantime is on twitch.tv slash camicakes, I'll be finishing the remaining components of this build, looking for the upgrades. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I'm sorry if I disappointed any of you with this perspective shift, but honestly, a lot of you asked for this, so I'm just going to play the game that's in front of me and let the developers handle the rest.